a lantern control. Four different decks so far. This is modern, baby. It is one of the key selling points of the format. Just do whatever you want. Even, even when the format has gotten to the point where, yeah, there's a best deck and everyone kind of agrees on it, people still show up with whatever. So the, the metagames are really diverse. A Glimmer Void, a Mox Opal, and a Codex Shredder is how Derek will start his game. For June, it's a Breeding Pool untapped. And I think we'll see a suspension search for tomorrow. So two counters on that. And away we go here in round number two from Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Can I get it right there? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> cool Caller's Bell. Yeah, let's make it two Cool Caller's Bell. No lantern yet here for Derek as Search Tomorrow is going to go down to one suspend counter. Stomping Ground's going to the battlefield untapped, down to 16. So for those of you relatively new to Modern, I, this is usually the time where I would try to explain what's going on with Lantern Control. Yeah, good luck. But if I did that, you would not believe me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they just turn it off. Yeah. They just turn off the television. <laughs> Basically, you want to get to a point with a, a variety of, of cheap and seemingly innocuous artifacts where you have total agency over your opponent's draw step and you mill them out or essentially lock them out of the game. Yes, they're not allowed to have any fun. Codex Shredder, target yourself. Ancient Stirring's down. Ring the bell. There goes a Decay and a Remand. Ring the bell again. There goes a Valakut and an Inquisition of Kozilek. And uh, worth noting here, there are only two copies of Valakut in the deck. There goes one. So one getting milled over, is that's a big swing in the game. Is it time for Ensnaring Bridge? Yes, it is. Now, Inventor's Fair out there on the battlefield there for Derek as well. That's why he's on 21 right now. So here's a search tomorrow. And even though Scape Shift is a combo deck, gaining little pieces of life against it is valuable. Uh, it's not, it doesn't go infinite. It's usually killing you. You know, it can deal 21 or 24. And in Modern, with Fetch lands and the Ravnica Duel lands, that's usually enough to kill your opponent. But if you can get over the top of that uh, and get yourself to a spot where you can survive a Scape Shift casting, that's, a, that's another big swing in the game. So uh, Derek picking up a couple pieces of, of life here and there is more meaningful than it would seem. Yeah, this version of Scape Shift too here by Lee, you know, he doesn't have 14 mountains like a red-green Titan Shift version would have. He's got four stomping grounds, four steam vents, uh, a sheltered thicket, which is of course the red green cycling land, and one mountain. And it doesn't look like he has any copies of Prismatic Omen in his deck either. So it got, with only with only one Valka left, it could be difficult here. Yep. And Fraley's going to get to keep milling with his bells too. It's possible the second one gets turned over, and then you're drawing to Primeval Titan beat no, down. No, no oh, Titans. Yeah. Excuse me. Just Snapcaster Mage beat down. I mean, it's really hard. And the bring to lights here that are in Lee's deck, not able to search for anything all that creative in game number one. Yeah, I mean, it's just supposed to be more copies of Scape Ship, basically, yeah. with a little bit of an extra toolbox. For Lee, it looks like it's going to be a Snapcaster Mage. He might be going to Farseek which he is. So here comes Farseek. I kind of wish that Fraley was milling a response here because given the lands that uh, Suli has in play, you could imagine that he's searching for a one of land. Yeah, that's true. And you might, you might tag it. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're going to do it anyway, then I, I would consider doing it now. There's basic planes. Farseek, best card in this deck. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Look at all the searching. Now there is a breeding pool. Now we're going to go back over to Derek, who's going to Codex Shred. Excuse me, he's going to Bell first. There goes Leyline of Sanctity. Bring the lights, Inquisitions, all that stuff. All yeah, right. that, that speaks to my point. If he was going to mill anyway, then I would just do it in, in response to the search spell. Fraley will draw after gaining a life from the fair of Inventors. Big upgrade for this deck. Oh, yeah, huge add. Second bridge. 
So the only thing that Derek's really missing here is a lantern. Other than that, he's basically all set up. Yeah, with a lantern there, then he has, then he can actually see the draw step, and that's when the lock really gets cinched in. Search for tomorrow in hand here for Soon Lee. Going to sacrifice a beautiful misty rainforest. Thinking basic island, perhaps? Yes. Now here's search for tomorrow. So this will be land number eight. Quick math, seven times three is 21. Still got it. Yeah. <laughs> Still, still got it. He could bring the light for escape shift this turn if he wants to. And then I think he would be able to attack with Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. Looks like two cards, yeah. Yeah, two cards. So I think this might be a W here for, for Sud Lee. Well, keep in mind there's the, the there's the shredder and the bells here. He's got yeah, he's got a milliner he's got a mill in response to escape shift. So bring the light's gonna find scape shift. And there should be some milling in response to escape shift here. Yes. Well, if he if if Fraley lets it resolve, then we're done. Yeah, then we are. If he lets this resolve, we are done. Yeah, he's got to respond here. He's got to respond here and mill and hope to get the copy, the remaining copy of Alakad out of the deck. And it looks like Suli is going to sacrifice eight lands here. Assuming there are seven mountains in the deck. He's yeah, he's got plenty of stomping grounds and steam vents. Yeah, four stomping grounds, four steam vents, a shelter thicket, and a mountain. So. Four, eight, nine, ten total, and he's got a stomping ground on the battlefield. But even if you don't mill over the Valica, you might mill over some of his mountains. He might not have enough in his deck. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's milling in response. Yeah. Because once Scape Shift, once it resolves, that's when you start sacrificing right. the lands. It's not part of the cost. So. And Derek did not allow himself to get lucky in this situation. And I think this, these might be four, six, seven. Yep, that's it. These might be what? Yeah, so uh, it looked like uh, Sully had one mountain left in the deck. So you could have milled over either two mountains or a Valakut and prevented that from happening. Yeah, then you just The slide. two mountain scenario is unlikely, but the one Valakut, I mean, you know. Got to hope for the best. That's probably a 5%er so, so in, that, in that range, you know. Something low but possible. Right. That's for sure. As Jun Sully is going to win game one here over Derek Fraley. Scape shift up a game here over Lantern Control. As we take a look at the sideboards, we will start with Derek, who's got two Collective Brutality, two Leyline of Sanctity, two Graft Digger's Cage, two Welding Jar, a Ghost Quarter, a Padim Council of Innovation, a Gaddock Teague, a Pithing Needle, a Nature's Claim, a Silla Primordium, and a copy of Surgical Extraction. There are some good ones here. So I'm, I'm curious to see if the extra ley lines come in. Um, they, they do stop the combo kills, but it's also just sitting in play for a long time, and Suli's probably bringing in some interaction. Um, I would probably bring in the Welding Jars, expecting some amount of artifact removal. Uh, I would be interested in the Gaddock Teak as well. I don't know if Surgical Extraction does not seem great here. I think Suli operates too much with what's on the battlefield. He's not really leaning on one spell to win the game, uh, but a lot of Lantern Control players just sort of bring that in in any slow matchup post-board. We go to the other side of things here with Jun Suli and his scape shift deck because he's currently up a game. He's got three ops in the Bayloth, two to spell, two engineered explosives, two relic of progenitus, a shatterstorm, a madcap experiment to go along with the platinum Empyrean, a little combo there along with the crumble to dust and anger of the gods and a nature's claim. Some goodies for him as well. Yeah, he needs stuff that can just interact with the battlefield here. The two copies of engineered explosives and the shatterstorm, uh, they're excellent here. And I think Fraley does enough with the graveyard that the relics are, are worth bringing in and the opportunity cost is, is basically zero. And those are the options there for both players and game number two will be underway here in just a moment but it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show. Mm -hmm. It's time for SCG game night folks. Who? Where Patrick, well I, this one I, you, you sort of knew because yes. we have the pins. Right. So I'll let, you, I'll let you do your thing, see if you still got it. So you can head over to go.surcitygames.com slash game night and find the game night close to you. Every month we send out a new kit with pins and tokens to the stores that are signed up. Stores can then run game night however they want to any day of the week just to get players in their store on a regular basis for some fun and friendly magic. This is Smell Snare. When I saw the token, I actually thought it was something monk-related that rhymed with skunk, but it is not. 
Smellsair. And now, let's see the other ones, which I have not seen yet. In October, Vampire Night Fox. Okay. It's from Nighthawk. Yeah. Do I, you get it? Uh, I, I do guess you, I... Do I, you I, get it? I guess I got it. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how much there is to get. <laughs> and do we have November? Of course we have November. Tarmogoit. Goat. <laughs> Tarmogoit? <laughs> Dude, it's been a while. <laughs> Go.starcitygames.com slash game night. Find the game night closest to you. Stores, if you're not signed up for a game night, you can contact your Star City Games in-store play representative. Get signed up as soon as possible. Do you know what that's from? Uh, uh, Tom Goyf? Uh, well, well done. Well done. So you're not all the way out of it just yet. We're really leaning in on Tom Goyf. We have the Tom die. We get do. Get in the broadcast. Oh, yeah. We can get the Tom die right now. Why, we, why, why even wait? I wish that if we were going to leverage it so much that we chose something... Uh, with a prefix less nonsensical than Tarmo. I don't know. What do you mean? It doesn't mean anything. I feel like it means everything. And you know what you can do? You can keep track of your creatures, power and toughness, in style. At go.sarcitygames.com <laughs> slash Tarmo die. Really surprised that URL wasn't already taken. <laughs> and you can keep track of your Tarmogoyfs with this die. It's actually pretty helpful for keeping track of it. Spins up on top of your Tarmogoyf. There you go. See, now that's the hard sell. You definitely won't have its power and toughness correct because no one ever does <laughs> but uh it will it is good for tracking what you believe your stats of a tarmogoyf to be now that's a better a, that's a better tagline at any particular time that's a better tagline for the product single dice and sets of four You'll available still be wrong but it'll be clear <laughs> <laughs> that's something I thought we banned this. I thought pile shuffling got no, banned. No, this is banned. I know you've been away for a little while. <laughs> what it's happened? Not bad. It's not bad. I go away. I go away for four months, and now this is okay again. <laughs> like what? What on earth? It's not. I don't think it's. I don't think it's banned. I thought we banned this. I think it's once per right. match. I don't okay. think it's banned. Or though. once per game. I think it's once per game. Okay. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I can promise one. One thing I know for sure, it's not banned. Okay. It's I, not banned. I really, you know, I really thought we banned this. Now, if there's a second time from June here, then you've got a legit beef. Okay, cool. You got a legit beef. You can you can go in on. I know. You know, I'm not up to date on all the the rules. You know, the the. The, and the rules changed to Planeswalkers, where the card type is now legendary. I didn't know if that was uh, live already or if it went live with Ixalan. I wanted to confirm that before we started covering the event. Good. But similarly, I was under the impression this was banned, <laughs> and then I was watching it, so I was asking <laughs> why, well, I this, why this was okay. I understand. That's your, that's your life's work right there? <laughs> the yeah, removal that's of the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Okay. What, okay. kind of, what kind of invent did you I have? Got, I, got, I got kids now. It's different. But before that, that was my last story. That was story. it. That None, was it. Everything, all 34 years of my life was leading up to that <laughs> announcement that you couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> and now here we are. Right. And so, I'm, I, you know, and I, I don't know if it's one of those things. Maybe I don't have an understanding of what the rule set is. <laughs> Maybe I was gone and people with bad motives got to go <laughs> in and change the rules back and I didn't see it. I don't know. A quick unwind. Right. So that's why I was asking. <laughs> Both players are going to take a look at their openers. It looks like they're good. We're going to start things off with a white lane line. Su Lee does not look to be terribly surprised by this. It's an Inventor's Fair. It's a Codex Shredder. And let's play game number two, shall we? A Misty Rainforest. Going to bring June down to at least 19. We'll see how low he will go. Looks like Stomping Ground might be on the way. And in this matchup, you can search up whatever lands you want, right? You're not taking any damage. Yeah, it's a freebie. So down to 17 as he searches up a stomping ground. And it's a search for tomorrow. Although something that is, it, it's minor, but something to keep in mind. A, some of the sequencing of what lands he wants to get in one order will be a function of the risk of singletons getting milled over. For sure. For sure. You, there's no guarantee that, you know, your deck stays intact the whole way through. So it's minor, but something to keep in mind. You're not on autopilot in, the, in terms of the sequencing with which you search your lands in this kind of matchup. Ancient Stirrings will get a Welding Jar. Welding Jar will be the play. And is there any follow-up here for Derek? It looks like the answer is no. So not a great start here for your Lantern player. Scape Shift going to go down to one. Snapcaster Mage the draw. Steam Fence on the battlefield untapped. Lee will fall down to 15. And now we'll see Sakura Tribe build there. Derek will Codex Shredder himself. There goes a Ghost Quarter. Inventor's Fair will not trigger, so he'll just draw a card. That's a Ghost Quarter. 
this is an ensnaring bridge, which is a card that he still kind of has to leave in in the matchup, even though it's not great here. Yeah, out of uh, out of respect. Search tomorrow is going to go off. And I like that Sulu is not just on autopilot sacking the Sakura Tribe Elder. I see that from some more novice players of these sort of strategies. But the points of damage matter. I mean, Suli barely got over the line last game. And it required a Snapcaster Mage attack to get fairly low enough to the scape ship being able to finish out the game. So he'll sacrifice it when he needs the mana. But in the meantime, get in those points of damage. They, they do matter. Well, there is the one. You see him attack with some purpose. A little flourish. A little flourish. Yeah. I don't think this is his first time around a scape ship deck. Now here's Hobson and Bailoff. Four life on the way, up to 17 for Suli. As we go back over to Fraley, he'll gain a life from Inventor's Fair. So I'm a little surprised to see this, as you would not normally... This does not seem like a good matchup for Opson and Bailoff. It's possible Suli is respecting cranial extraction type effects enough, where he thinks that Valakut may not be a reliable kill, and he just needs more stuff that can win the game. Also, because he has more artifact removal post-board, he can fight through the Snaring Bridge. Yep. Or at least he can expect that it's not going to be good every game. You know, he's got engineer explosives in hand, which in this instance would actually take care of welding jar, not ensnaring bridge. And he's but got one shatterstorm in his sideboard, which you can also find with bring to life. Yeah, so he's got ways deal. to clear it away. He's got ways to clear things away. See if there's a follow-up here for Fraley or not. Well, it looks like Suli is now going to sacrifice that secure tribe elder. He got in the one shot. Yep. Now he's going to figure out what land he wants to get. He looks like he's eyeing up a planes, but he's going to search his deck just to make sure, and he'll go with an island instead. Yeah, if he can avoid it, he would prefer not to be searching for the mountains because he might need those for a scape shift kill. Now we go back over to Suli, who's drawn another copy of Engineer Explosives. Here is Bring to Light. Might be time for the Shatterstorm, perhaps? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> There's that. <laughs> that is nice. Yep. Shatterstorm will take a look at. Uh, Codex Shredder is going to go active, going to turn over an abrupt decay. But uh, if my memory is correct, Shatterstorm, no regeneration allowed. Correct. Yeah. Buried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buried. That's right. Destroy artifacts, they cannot be regenerated. In comes Opson and Bayloth. And now that ley line's looking a little foolish. And Glimmer Void's gone too. Oh, yeah. Just the. The extra bonus. Yeah. That's the full amount right there. And see, this is this is part of the appeal of the Bring to Light version as opposed to the Titan Ship version. You get a little flexibility. Right. You're not just all in on, on it. And you also have more action. You know, the uh, some of these builds of Scape Ship, you kind of only have eight cards or 12 cards that you're drawing to. The Bring to Light, backed up by Snapcaster Mage, you have Cryptics. You just have more cards that matter. One of your favorite cards, Remand. Remand. Yeah, you get access to that. Snapcaster Mage Shatterstorm's got me going. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun little one-two yeah. punch. Yeah. As Fraley attempts to rebuild, so to speak, yeah. <laughs> with lanterns. Engineer Explosives being on one right now going to be a problem as well. But one of the nice things, too, here is that, you know, Suli gets to kind of do this little bob and weave plan because he has so much flexibility of, okay, you have ley line. All right, I'm just going to attack you. I don't really care. And he can bring in the Opsin Bell loss in this matchup because he has Shatterstorm and Bring to Light. So he has a, effectively a lot of Shatterstorm, so he can expect to be able to blow up in Snaring Bridge. Fraley down to four. Here is Secure Tribe Elder past the turn back. And we're going to see a shuffle here with the Lantern because Derek's top card not particularly good. Well, that unfortunately, that characteristic is shared by every other card in his deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have some difficulty getting out of this one, maybe. <laughs> maybe maybe a rough go of it. Yeah. Let's turn over the top card of the deck, and it's... Oh, that's bad, too. It's not... <laughs> Try again. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you get to go again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always good. At least you get to go again. But, all right, let's. Well, we don't get to see, I guess. Yeah, this we, one's a secret we, for everybody. This is a mystery. Yeah. Oh, what could it be? You're excited for this draw step. I oh, know yeah. that. I'm sweating it. Yep. Get a good little look here, hopefully. 
Looked like it was just a land. Yeah, that's going to be an extension of the hand. Is Jun Su Lee is going to win this match over Derek Fraley. Two games to zero. Scape Shift is going to very easily take care of Lantern Control. And it's kind of that flexibility of bring the light. Able to get the job done here for Su Lee. Yeah. Uh